Okay, so we are going to jump right in with the primary question. I have to navigate over here. What is SEO? That's the burning question, isn't it? <laughs> oh, you're right. Watching the video. It's tall enough. Oh, yeah, the video is coming up. You're right. So, what is SEO? We're going to take the pressure off our panelists and we're going to give you a very quick video clip to watch that is going to help you understand what it is right off the bat. What is SEO and what does it do? Hmm, let's take a look at an example. Prospect Mike is searching online for a service that you offer. He puts the keyword into your search engine like Google, Yahoo, or Bing, and here are the results. Unfortunately, your site is not there. What does Mike do next? Yes, he goes to your competitor's website, which is on the search results, and just like that, you've lost a prospect who might have otherwise become your lifelong client. So simply put, if you lose your spot on the search results there, you lose clients and you lose business. Well, you might ask, how can I have Google put my site up there? That is what SEO does. Search Engine Optimization, or SEO, is a process to get your site moving up the search engine results. Studies show that the first three results get 90% of the clicks, while 53% of them go to the top result. So SEO can help you get more traffic. On top of that, SEO delivers more targeted and qualified website visitors reduces your cost of online customer acquisition, increases brand awareness, increases sales, and much more. As more and more people rely on the internet search engines like Google, Yahoo, or Bing, instead of Yellowbook to find a service or product, businesses cannot afford to lose the battle on SEO. Are you excited now? <laughs> okay, so before we actually, let me go back a second. Um, So, just a quick, <coughs> now we do a quick quiz. What does SEO stand for? Search engine optimization. Oh, it's up there too. <laughs> 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 I gave you the nice. answer. That's awesome. And my other question is for, you, for you is, what do you now understand SEO does for your business? Go ahead and just throw out answers. It's okay if you're wrong. Puts us in front of the competition. Puts you in front of the competition. It up in Moves it up in search results. It's a ranking. Helps your ranking. Reduces your cost of the online exposure. Potentially, yeah. Great. Anything else? Okay. So SEO is basically the strategy of getting your website to be more visible when someone types in a search term online. That's essentially what SEO is. Now the experts. I just teach this stuff, right? The experts are going to even refine this today. Our experts are going to be giving us way more information about strategies, best practices, things that don't work that used to, lots and lots of ideas. So that's what we're going to start with. So question number two is, many business owners want to ignore SEO. How many of you want to ignore SEO? I'm internet. It's okay, be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather not think about this. Okay. So, and we're busy. Business owners are busy. You're overwhelmed. There's so much to juggle. There's so much to do. I want for our panelists to talk a little bit about why SEO matters to small business in your opinion. I'm going to have Tim go first and then we'll go this way. So go ahead and do first, Tim. Why does it matter in your opinion to small business? Sure. Well, like the video said, it actually explained it very well in terms of you're losing customers if you don't have the opportunity to be represented well on the first page. So it really boils down to, you know, presenting your business, getting found in the first place from a search perspective. And I'm sure these guys will add more. Okay, yeah, for us, um, for example, I got two um, inquiries in the last couple days just from our website, people go finding us on Google and then submitting. And we have been getting so much overwhelming work just from our web presence that like we almost don't have time to go out and do other marketing we're just trying to keep the work going so um, I think that's a testament to the power of SEO people are searching we know this on Google way more than picking up the yellow pages and different things that they um, they were in the past um, yeah so 
Very, very important. <laughs> Want to add anything else? Just, you're losing out on opportunity. It is, uh, I mean, search is an opportunity. We say, in our company, we say that today your website is at the heart of your marketing, and part of making your website work for you is working on the SEO. So um, any business owner can understand. You don't want to lose out on potential business, right? Yeah, you know, it, like they said, it helps prospective customers find you. And if they can't find you, they can't get what you have to offer. It's that simple to me. I mean, if you're going to look for something, and I don't know about you guys, I mean, I'm kind of in that category, in that age group that, you know, some made it, some didn't. But um, if, if I go to look for something, the first place I go is the internet. So I assume everybody else in the world's doing the same thing. How many of you, when you have something that you want to buy, go to Google first? Google it. Especially if it's something expensive, are you more likely to Google it? I am. No, I also go to Amazon just to see if it's cheaper on Amazon than at my grocery store or whatever I'm buying. So Google uh, search is really, really ubiquitous. I read a statistic recently that said that 70% of all, all sales begin online. 70%. Um, and that was a 2015 statistic, so it may be changing. But that, uh, that really caused me to pause. Okay, well, if people are searching, I better be found. That's a really valuable thing. The thing is, if you do it because you're terrified or you don't want to miss out, that's not a really good motivator. So we're going to talk about the benefits, we're going to talk about practices that you can do um, and ways to make it easy for you so that you're doing it because you're moving towards something rather than afraid of something, if that makes sense. So the motivation matters. So the, second, uh, the third question that we've got here is, uh, what's your favorite tip for SEO in 2016? And David, I'm going to have you take this one next. All right. Um, I think one of the biggest things that we're seeing change is people using not just one keyword, but searching from their mobile device with long text. They're like, how do I find this service in Salem? Or these big, long search terms. So before, there was a strategy to put keywords in your page, like a bunch of keywords. But now, it's to match the natural language that people are using. So. For 2016, I think one of the biggest tips, I'll let the others uh, expand on this, is um, writing content that is natural sounding language and really, really good content um, as well. Alex, you're up next. Interesting order. Um, for us, it's been really this concept of holistic SEO. So. Uh, like David was saying, rather than just focusing on the keywords, which keywords are still very important, we still work with keywords, but it's about how you're doing everything else, the design of your website, how you're reaching out in social media, how you're connecting your online presence with your offline presence. In 2016, it's really about how all of your efforts work together to get people to your website and to get people to make that purchase. Paul, do you want to add anything, your favorite tip for SEO in 2016? You know, like David said, you know, phrases. Because I know when I search, you know, I'm typically searching um, uh, the prefix where to find, how to use, how to make, you know, where to buy, you know. So I'm using a lot of questions. So in my blogs, that's what I'm putting in. How to, where to, why. So great, great tip. I'm I'm going to learn a lot from these guys, too. Well, keep to David, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Tim, what's your favorite tip for SEO in 2016? I uh, concur with these guys. I'll, I'll add a couple things uh, just to build on it. So if you're thinking of a blog, for example, and we like to think in terms of answering frequently asked questions, just keep an, an ongoing list. What are people asking when they're on the phone, when they're sending you email? Um, and then, so, so answer those with the question in the title of your blog, if you're writing a blog, for example, and then uh, be able to also think about, think beyond the box and think about what should, be, sh what should people be asking and answer those things as well. So, so be able to kind of uh, showcase those answers in, in combination with you know, what people are asking on a regular basis. So uh, yeah, leave it at that. Is it just in the title or is it in the body too? Yes. <laughs> yes. All the above. All the above. Plus some. Yeah. Uh, both. 
So um, the other thing I want to add to that is a tip for SEO in 2016 is that if your website isn't optimized for mobile, you want to get on that very, very soon. Um, Google made an announcement last a year ago in February that they were going to be prioritizing websites that had code that recognized screen size, that was able to modify the layout and the functionality of a website depending on this, the user's screen size or this, the device that the user is, is actually accessing your site from. And if your site does not have custom code for that or it doesn't recognize those devices, um, you, you're going to compromise your SEO. Um, so that's a really important one. Did I say that right? Am I about right on that one? Yeah, I mean, there's a, um, you'll hear mobile friendly and then you'll hear responsive. They're slightly different things, but they work together. Um, so, and if you want any research on that, uh, in our terms, we're calling it mobile get in. So mobile just search for mobile get in. Um, and there's been, a, there's some research that's been done that shows how it's impacting websites. And Google has a tool that you can go, if you type Google mobile friendly checker, you can type in your website as it is right now, and it'll tell you if it's uh, if it's already mobile friendly or not. Chances are pretty good if you got to a website where the font is like you don't just need your regular readers; you need super readers. <laughs> Chances are pretty good it's not mobile responsive. So <laughs> great! I just wanted to add that one on. Okay, so next question. Um, business owners are using the ideas that we were just talking about to improve the ranking. I'm curious if you guys have a response to how long it takes to start seeing a benefit. I'm actually gonna have Paul take this one and I'll come back to Alex next. Well, it looks to me about two months. Tell us what you've done. So, you know, I, I sat down with Jen in, on September 9th of 2015, or a, a little bit before that, and I started doing blogs, weekly blogs on September 9th. Uh, my October numbers were down over the previous October. November up 3%, December up 52%, so it looked about two months to me before things start really going. Um, videos about the same thing, so it looks to me about two months. Do you want to show them that graph? It's a, great it's graph. a good graph. Just to, see, just to see the trend. Wow. <laughs> He's been blogging once a week since September. Religiously. Yeah, Paul came into my office and said, Jen, i got to tell you about my new religion. <laughs> my new religion is blogging once right. a week. <laughs> and YouTube videos every other week, right? Yep. So that's the kind of results that you can see if you start blogging consistently. Yeah. Can I ask how you come up with blog ideas? Oh, uh, you know, like, like, like Tim said, you know, I, when I sat down with Jen, I said, well, what are customers asking you? Well, what size anchor do I need for my boat? You know, what size anchor nest? You know, what, what do I need for this? How do I do this? And so I just listed them all out, and I just answered the questions. So and even though it doesn't have to be like a huge epic. 300 words. Okay. That's, that's, where, that's where I hit. I hit 300, and if I still feel chatty, it'll get up to 400. <laughs> <laughs> so are you doing the YouTube videos as a blog or separate from? Separate. So I do blogs and I do videos. And do you link them together? Mm, I do my videos. I link my videos to my blogs since I do blogs once a week. Mm -hmm. Videos every two weeks. They're, they're never going to meet. Correct. But every blog that I have, once I do a video, if I do a video, I put a link to that video on the blog as well. What do you, video? What do you, what video do you use? I mean, what do you video with? Myself. <laughs> standing in front of a camera, talking with my product. I've been out of my boat, did video of me out of my boat talking about how I do this and how I do that. You, he, Paul got a green screen, so sometimes he's got a picture of like the river behind him, that's just the birds are flying by, and he's just talking about his boat. Or you, One of the things that I think is genius about what you're doing is that not only is he answering questions that are related to his product, like how do I prevent my aluminum boat from getting dinged up by the anchor, He's also blogging about, or he's doing videos and blogging about things like how do I catch a, how do I catch a sturgeon, sturgeon or a steelhead. That's his audience. That's what they want to know. And when he, when customers get useful information from a business owner that helps their life get better, that establishes credibility. And they're like, well, who is this guy? What, what's he doing? And then they find out he's got a product that might help them. So it's all connected. You're making your customers more informed. Where does the video show up? 
So we're going to actually going to table the specific questions until the second half. Hold that thought because you're going to the right place with this. I told you, I'm in. You, <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I want to you tell you. you <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So what I want to do, just add to your, to answer your question of like, well, where do I get ideas for blogs or where do I get ideas for um, video? Come and meet with me as a business head. Advisor. There's no cost for that. We can brainstorm together. You can also hire an expert to help you do that. So there's lots of options. So I'm going to have you guys also answer this. I wanted Paul to speak first because he's kind of our he's our test test case. rat test rat lab rat <laughs> lab, <laughs> lab rat. There you go. <laughs> but I want you guys to take this too. So Alex, I want anything that you have um, to add about where you start to see results when you start doing a, a really strategic plan around your SEO. This is tricky because it really, really depends. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I hate saying that because I know that that doesn't give you an exact answer, but I mean, there are times that you can see a change within two weeks, within two months, and then there are times where it takes about a year. So m one of my examples is that uh, Jennifer started calling, we, it's not a rebrand, it's a brand refresh. And uh, we created a services page for it, and we've done a couple blog posts on it. I've been sharing it on social media. It's taken us about eight months for it to really bring in actual sales for us. But we're ranking really high. We're getting a, like a, an interest, a lead a week now. But it took us eight months to get there. So you have long-term strategies with certain words and certain phrases and then you're going to have those short term where if you don't see it in a couple of months then you're not you need to expand your strategy or maybe it's not the best word for you so i hate to say it but it depends a lot Samra, david do you want to add anything on that i would um i like i like they're saying here um you saw in paul's results it was it took a little while. So it's the process that we focus on at the beginning. For the first, he's, he talked about doing weekly blogs or whatever, and you just focus on the process, and it'll get you to the goal. Because the pe there's people who are doing it and people who aren't. So if you're one that's doing it, you're gonna start seeing results. Um, one thing of how long it takes to um, show up, there's a tool called Webmaster Tools, which you can register your site with Google. And when we make changes on the site, we'll submit those ch exact changes to Google. And within two days, we'll see it jump a little bit up or down. And basically, that's an indicator to us immediately, just an indicator of where we're going to be headed. So we feel it out. Within two days, you can get this like quick little litmus check. And then after that, you'll start seeing, like you said, over two months, two weeks, six months, you'll start seeing this trend happen. So you, you, it, it's everything, right? That's the webmaster tools you said on yeah. Google? Okay. Yeah. So just to, just to build on it, though, I, I completely concur. I think it really does depend. So I'm going to back up, Alex, because it depends on your industry. It depends on your, you know, what you're really tar trying to target. It depends on the competitiveness. Um, and, and I think one of the things, for those of us in the business, one of the things that's the hardest part of our business is managing expectations and you know I don't want to sit here and says well it's going to be two months and then you come back to me in two two months in one day and says I'm not number one on Google how many of you are getting calls every single day can I get you on the number one on Google does anybody get those calls I do. yeah I get those calls <laughs> and they're like do you have a, any idea what I do <laughs> But just managing that expectation um, is so critical, and I just want to throw that out there that it's really, really important to, to have that expectation. Yes, sir. So they're not Google. No, they're not Google. Uh, generally, it's it's people like us who who have decided to take a different marketing path, and they do robocalls and they do all this kind of stuff. But they they try to throw themselves off as Google, and it's extremely annoying. So how do you stop getting those phone calls? Good luck. That's a whole other class. One eight hundred no call. Yeah, that doesn't work. Good luck. Change their phone number. I'm on it. I don't get them. Okay. okay, good. So we're going to move on to the next one. Thanks for that. It depends is really the most honest answer, isn't it? I mean, your, your mileage varies. Yeah. I'm writing website copy for a couple of businesses, including my own, and I love it because I can see when I had a client that had not updated her blog in a year, and we did a single blog update. And do you guys know about Alexa.com? It ranks websites. 
So Google is usually one. It's like golf. You want a low score on Alexa, the lower the better. Um, and her website dropped 30,000 points just from posting one blog post on Alexa. I was like, Scar! I just was so thrilled. So the, the idea is that consistency, keep doing it, and it will take time. There is no, if there were a quick fix, believe it, these guys would know. These guys would have the answer. So well, can I add to that though really quickly? Because yeah. sometimes people will come out and they will tell you, hey, I can get you number one on Google. And, they, and they're like, they'll do something, they'll tweak something that will get you a really, really quick hit. And it used to work a lot with like press releases and, and maybe we'll get into that. But I mean, st stuff that would give you a really quick hit or maybe ranking a video. And they're like, look what I did. Mm -hmm. And then like a week later, you're gone. Mm -hmm. And it just... Be, be, be careful of that kind of quick hit because then you're going to want more of those quick hits and it's not a long-term strategy. Exactly. exactly. Sounds like a drug dealer or something. Though. Sounds like what? A drug dealer yeah. or something. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, right stakes for that. <laughs> All right. So in 2016, things keep changing with SEO. It's, it's a moving target. That's the hard part about SEO is that the game keeps changing. The algorithms keep changing. Google keeps changing the strategy. Um, and so there are some things, especially as an advisor, I hear this a lot. People come in and they meet with me and they say, okay, I know if I do X and Y, it's going to make my site be number one within, you know, a day or two. And I'm always really nervous and cautious about those because there really aren't quick fixes. Um, but what, the question is for you guys, what strategies don't work anymore for SEO that used to a few years ago? Because there's a lot of misconceptions out there about, well, what if I just do a bunch of keywords behind the scenes or I use white text? I mean, these are all those examples of that. Um, what things do you see that are not helping business owners when they're trying to do them now? And uh, let's see, I'm gonna have Tim take this one first. Um, so, I think I alluded to a couple of them, but uh, the things that were really powerful even a year ago, I mean, keyword stuffing is so 1990s, so I mean, that, that, that's like really, really old. But Can you describe what uh, keyword, keyword stuffing, stuffing is? Keyword stuffing is just like using a whole bunch of keywords, putting it up at the bottom of your page, making it white on white so <laughs> you think, oh, nobody sees them. But then you have this great big expanse on the bottom of the page and, and people were wondering, what is that? <laughs> anyway, that, that's kind of old. But I mean, things like, uh, like I, I mentioned, press releases are not having as much impact unless you're getting real true authority. And from authority, I mean like you're getting it from top news sites versus kind of the quick, cheap, quick fix uh, press release type sites that claim that this is gonna drive a lot of SEO uh, benefit. Um, but I think it all plays in concert, so uh, I'll let some other people focus what else or doesn't work? add to it. Um, there's another strategy out there where people will guarantee big results, and that's uh, like certain types of backlink building mm -hmm. where people would go in and get masses of people pointing to your site, and Google would be like, wow, this must be a really important site, and all of a sudden, it goes up there. But then Google starts sniffing out these different strategies. So now Google has moved towards something called an organic profile, which means where, which sites are these links coming from? What t different types of links are they? Are they all from forums and posts and Facebook, or are they all from credible sites? And so just basically building an organic um, link profile is good. Hiring somebody to go and post the same post in 150 different websites with a link to your site, not good. Thank you for bringing that up. But, <laughs> but organic inbound links are a great ranking factor. Let's not confuse that. So yeah. anyone that's actually linking to your site because you have some great information or um, maybe because you know you did a guest post on their site so they're linking to yours, that's really good. What David's talking about is the like, you know, you pay someone, I don't know, 50 bucks and they get a link on all of these websites that have like a hundred links. Those are the ones that Google doesn't yeah. like. Um, but to build on what they're talking about, I think we have to be more strategic with our keywords these days. <coughs> Google is very competitive. The online space is very competitive. So especially for a lot of our clients, for example, we work with um, an accounting firm and a financial firm, those, the really obvious terms, like accountant in Salem, 
are so competitive. So we have to be a little bit more strategic about how we phrase what we think people are looking for and finding those really, those, those nuggets that other people aren't looking for. For example, uh, we were so stoked that we figured out nest egg for wealth management. So many people look for nest egg, nobody else was using that word. So we, we were like, yes, we're taking it. Um, but you have to be pretty strategic these days about what keywords you're choosing and how you're talking about things. Okay, so now that we know what doesn't work, um, I'm going to ask our panel to give us an idea of what the ideal content strategy includes. Now I know that's another one of those bait, baiting questions that the answer is actually it depends. Um, but give us an idea of what kinds of things the strategy might include. And I'm actually going to have Paul just describe what you're currently doing, because that'll give us a jumping off point. Well, what I'm currently doing, my 2016 plan, is just continuing the blogs every week and the YouTube videos every two weeks. Um, I, I found out the other day that you know what I sell is an anchor nest. So if you Google anchor nest, I'm number one, two, three, four, five, six, and so nice. on. Um, somebody, one of my customers called it an anchor bracket. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've got one blog released and two more in queue that talk about how to use anchor brackets. Nice. Because I need to get that word out there. So I can, you know, I, I don't know if we're going to talk about funnels later, but it just kind of, you know, widens it up a little bit. So blogs, YouTube, and that's as far as my online presence. I, I run a wholesale site too, and I've got a different strategy for that. Um, but I have customers find me because of my online strategy. So, blogs, YouTube. That's, awesome. that's it. Awesome. Okay. It's working. Go back this way, Alex. You're up next. So, what do you think the ideal content strategy includes potentially? Okay, okay. Because, yeah, you, you knew my answer was going to be it depends. Um, <laughs> so, I'll say I, we work primarily with service, with uh, services focused businesses, we don't do a lot of product focus businesses, so I'm coming from the service side. Um, so we like to talk about blogging at least once a week. If you're comfortable getting into the video space, the nice thing about video is you can take a video, you pay like a dollar and you can get the transcript from the video so you can get everything you said and you can make that transcript into a blog post. From that blog post you can create tweets, you can you know, post it on, you can share that blog post on Facebook. So to us, the ideal content strategy is creating a piece of content and getting it as far spread as you can. Because we understand that creating one piece of content can take a lot of time, it can take a lot of effort. So the more you can use that content, the better off you're going to be and the more time you'll end up saving. You'll put up a lot of time up front, but then um, you can get a lot, of, a lot out of one piece of content. What she said. <laughs> That's perfect. And I'll go back to consistency. That's really important to set up whatever schedule works for you. If you can do once a day, once a week, once every other week, go for it. And uh, I, I want to mention a tool called Hootsuite. Say it again. Hootsuite. Spell. H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E. And what that allows you to do is take some content or a post and basically send it to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, brrr, big long list, all at one time when you make a new uh, article. So there's a, there's yeah. a few others. We yeah. we use HubSpot, um, but we pay for it. There's uh, Buffer, HubSpot? HubSpot, yes, and they have a free version of it. Um, we like it because it has a CRM component. We're not going to go into that. Yeah. Um, and there's also Buffer, B-U-F-F-E-R. They're known, I participate in their buffer chats on Twitter. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of tools out there to make it easier. Do any of them do Pinterest as well? That is a good question. Um, Sweet does. Okay. Uh, what are these used if they Pinterest? do Pinterest. It didn't used to, and now it does. Sweet. I do Pinterest separately, but yeah. <laughs> Love Pinterest. Oh, me too. Anyone that has, that's it, that has great photography, Pinterest is a place to be. 
Sorry, Tim. Yeah, no, just to build on, on all of this, but it, it, it does depend. But if you're in a visual business, uh, so we work with a lot of service businesses as well, a lot of contractors, a lot of landscapers, you know, various different things. But it, it, and if you have the opportunity to showcase your work in, in visual format and combine it with written format and video, I actually wrote a blog post on how five different ways to repurpose your content. So to build on that, if you go to Third River Marketing, shameless plug, uh, you can you can see what we're doing. Just exactly that strategy. So. Well, and I want to just define the word content because we keep throwing it around, but we never actually define what content is. Content, at least in my definition, because I'm also an avid blogger. I write three blogs, um, and content is just written material about an area of expertise or around a topic that's related to your area of expertise. That's all that content is. And what we're talking about here is leveraging your content. So if you have a blog post that you've written that's 600 words, can you turn that into a video? Can you shorten it and turn it into a Facebook up status update? Can you turn it into a tweet? Can you turn it into a cute little graphic that then you can put on Pinterest? and that graphic will link back to your website. So there's lots of ways of producing content that then you leverage or, or repurpose. Yeah? You're talking about pictures. So Pinterest versus Instagram? Yeah. Ooh, I can take this you one. You want to take that one? This is, All right. So I'm actually not really in SEO anymore. I'm in uh, social media. But um, it depends on your audience primarily. That's where I would start. So Pinterest is much more popular with um, older women, not necessarily older, but uh, they tend, it tends to be the 35 to 55 crowd, and it is still more popular with women. It's about 70% women, 30% men, um, though men are working on Pinterest, I, I can guarantee it. Um, Instagram is much more popular with the millennials, so if you're shooting for the 18 to 30 crowd, they love Instagram. Instagram is growing. And there, there's different strategies that you use for each one. Uh, Pinterest is much more about gathering content in one place. Instagram is much more about using hashtags to get people to find you. So I would start with the audience. It always starts with the audience. Which audience are you more interested in if you can only focus on one platform? For example, we're not on Instagram because Millennials don't tend to want our services, but we do have a Pinterest account. So um, it really depends on your audience to start with. The other thing I'd say is come back next month because we're doing another panel just like this specifically on social media. So if you have questions about matching what your business does with it, I mean, there's just infinite options out there for social media platforms um, and, and strategically matching the one that your business <laughs> is going to be well suited for and how that fits with your audience. We're going to be handling that question in way more depth next month. So thank you for taking that one. That's a good one. OK, so I'm looking at the time. We've got 20 minutes, and we've got like, prepared questions. But I think I kind of want to scoot ahead of some of the ones we prepared. Sorry, guys. Um, I think I want to go to question number nine, or this is number eight for you guys. Sorry. <laughs> How do you find time for working on your own business SEO? Um, and what do you focus on? So I'm going to have David take this one. Okay. We are, we're a lot better at doing it for our customers than ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the janitor's True. closet. You know what I mean? Like the, the place looks great, but no. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we have to pump each other up and uh, set up schedules and be like, hey, you didn't write your blog post this week. What's going on? You know, and really get ourselves to... But naturally, I'm not, I don't like writing, you know, but um, was it, did you say that? How it became, I don't know. I said, yeah, his religion, his new religion. After we get in the rhythm, then it's just something you do. So it takes uh, the first month or so, it's a grind, but once you get through it, ideas start coming and there's stuff that you want to write about, so. Paul, well, how about you? We know what you focus on, but... Uh, well, yeah, I mean, in, in my business, it's it's almost like a one-man show where I do all the designing, the, the marketing, the, the building, the manufacturing, the vendor management, the, the customer management. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, but, 
you know, I mean, the idea of, you know, running a small business is not easy. If you want it to be easy, then you will find something else to do, really. Uh, but you have to decide if you're going to do it. You know, if you want to grow the business, well, if you want to grow the business, you got to do the work. So you, and I found that this works, you know, my, my blog and my YouTube. So all the other stuff I was doing, so I have to do this. If, if I don't want to do this, then I'm, I'm not going to run the business. So it's basically a decision. Now, doing blogs, you know, like I say, 300 words, that's not that difficult. Once you understand, you know, what, you know, the questions people are asking you or what you want to talk about. I mean, I'll be sitting down watching TV with my wife, and i got a laptop in, in the drawer right next to me. Wow. <laughs> yes, dear. <laughs> yeah. Can you put that on pause for a minute and, and knock it out? I mean, it's important. You know, I mean, it grows my business. It's generated revenue, so I have to do it. We only had a few people answer, but I want to go to Q&A because I know you guys are going to have way more and more stuff to talk about. So I want to move into Q&A, and this is basically up to you guys. I want you to think about a question, a burning question you came with that you want to ask our panelists. And it would be helpful if you asked a specific person just to keep things flowing, because we're going to do like a question and an answer, and then we're going to get the next person's question and then an answer. So we're not going to let the whole panel answer. We just want to keep things flowing, making sure everybody gets that question answered. So um, who has a question? Yeah. Uh, about blogging, you know, uh, or, or any of you actually that applies to, not everybody is, is good in writing. Okay. Uh, and also, in order to keep the content fresh, you, got, as you are absolutely right, that's you have more frequency. Right? But I have heard, and I do not know whether this is a fact or a fiction or whatever it is, but there are tools which actually can in your industry, pick up important uh, links to the information of the news bulletins, and it just compiles them and dumps it into your, uh, basically you are a clearing house. It appears as if it's like a, a fresh blog of yours. But so your question is, is it helpful? Writing, first of all. Yeah, is, is that true? And is it right. helpful to have your site automatically um, updated with other content from other right. places? Exactly. So do you, what do you guys think I, about I, that? I don't do that, so I can't answer that question. But blogs to me, and I, I've got a, uh, arguably a ninth grade education. Okay. So it's, it's not that hard. It's just saying, I'm going to do it. It has to be done. But as far as the other stuff, and if I you can't want, And if you want uh, content development strategies, I'm happy to brainstorm with you on that one. Is Copy like an RSS feed or whatever it's called. An RSS feed? Um, that, that's a little different. Oh, is this? Yeah. And do you guys want to take this? Well, any, I'm going to let David take one, one thing I think, it sounds like if you take automatic content from other places, it's not original content. And that's one thing that will separate your site from others. It's like you're writing on your topic from you, from your expertise. So. Writing original content is very important. What about copyrights? There's that yeah, too. Yeah, that's so a different. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. So yeah, original. I will add to that though, really quickly. There, there is a unique content strategy, but there is also the aggregated content strategy. And you look at some of the biggest sites in the world right now, and their aggregated content. Buzzfeed, for example. Buzzfeed, yeah. uh, Western journalism, Liftable. Uh, I mean, my my wife's niece and uh, niece-in-law or ne nephew-in-law however that works anyway they run Western journalism and what liftable it's all aggregated content they find content from other people and they're some of the highest trafficked websites in the US so there is a there is an alternate strategy to that too it just depends on what content strategy and Jen can help you with that and it depends on your end goal yeah absolutely because their end goal is that website traffic yes if your end goal is a sale Aggregate content might not be the best strategy for you. Good point. Okay, let's take another question. Um, for well, maybe try you, Tim. Um, how to leverage your content? How to push it out? Where do you push it out to? <laughs> so the question is, where do you? I'm repeating it so it gets on the mic. So where do you push your content out to? How do you get it out there? How do you bridge the gap between making it on your website and sharing it? Uh, utilizing available tools like was mentioned here but just and repurposing it really so getting getting videos on YouTube but also considering getting Vimeo or getting getting videos on Vimeo uh, maybe on uh, getting content or turning it into a slideshow and getting it on slideshare uh, slideshare.net is a place you can put PowerPoints 
Um, so there's just a, a matter of really just pushing it out there in as many different places as you possibly can. Um, getting it uh, syndicated on uh, social media or, or share it on social media. They're, they're all, these are all ranking factors is the different places. You just think about the different tentacles, so to speak, or spokes that you can put in the wheel and, and, and get that into, depending on the content format, whether it's video, written, uh, uh, slide share, you know, et cetera, to just How try to get it up there. Come next month. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds <laughs> and thousands. <laughs> If I could tag on to that question. Please, go ahead. Um, so um, I have therapy game products that I wanted to get into all the schools of mm -hmm. occupational and physical therapy. What's the best way to access those professors that I already have their names and, and I want them to share? Do you have their email addresses? I can go to the school's websites and, you know, EDU, so-and-so, so EDU, and so I can do it that way, but I'm, that's why I'm asking. Again, I think you have to look at SEO as a long play um, and, and consider that if you're writing content or you know, positioning content to attract that teacher or professor, mm -hmm. um, that will take longer than picking up the phone and calling them. If, if, the old-fashioned way. The old-fashioned way. So it just depends on your goals and, and kind of yeah. how you want to position it. it and and can do, if you can do both for, for the benefits of both, then that's even better. Thank you. Does that make sense? I just want to know what your take is on pay-per-clicks because it sounds like what you guys are talking about is like organically creating content and then what you guys do about let, let me just give you my challenge on pay-per-clicks because I'm not a pay-per-click guy. Um, I've, I've done it before in the past, but here, here's my challenge with that. You put a keyword in there and you're going to pay for this keyword. In my mind, I already know if I'm able to put the keyword in, I know what, they, what I want them to find. So I'll, click, I'll create a blog around that keyword for free. My challenge with pay-per-clicks, I would pay for pay-per-click, but I don't know what keywords I don't know. Make sense? So that's, that's my take on that. Our two, our two cents, if you're going to do pay-per-click, go with somebody who does pay-per-click specifically. When we have clients that want to do pay-per-click, pay we hire someone that does that specifically because they do that keyword research, we, we prefer organic content. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll add to that really quickly. Okay. <clears throat> I'm a bit of a contrarian on this, so we're here to talk about SEO, but I absolutely believe in pay-per-click as well, depending on your strategy and your goals. If you, can come up, if you can come up with an acceptable cost of acquisition for a new client, and that works with a pay-per-click strategy based on how much the click is going to cost, absolutely consider that in your strategy because you can drive clients really fast with pay-per-click and very cost-effectively if you know what you're doing. So we do a lot of it. Yeah. That's if you know what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, we just had, well, never mind. Can I add that? Actually, I'm going to have Susan. <coughs> Thanks. I was wondering about strategies for finding optimal reports. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. Well, so we strategies just went through for this. Finding optimal keywords. Go ahead, Tim. We just went through this uh, for, for a couple different people. Um, so it's fresh on my mind, but we there, there's there's a lot of different tools out there. There's a tool called spyfu.com, uh, spyfu. Uh, that sounded really bad. Sorry. Uh, so <laughs> spyfu.com. I'll leave it at that. Uh, there you can also go direct to the source uh, of Google. I mean, there's a couple different ways to do that. Th think, type into the search engine, and see what they suggest. It's called Google's predictive search. So if you're thinking about a keyword or a keyword phrase, which is even better, just start typing and see what comes up. And, and that's, that's another good option. I want to add one more. It's the Google Keyword Planner to that list. The yes. Keyword Planner, where you can type in a keyword and it'll show all sorts of keywords, how many people are searching that keyword monthly, other um, suggestions around that same body of text. Well, this is also another Google suggestion, but I, use, I love using Google Trends. I love that tool because it, it, it works a lot of this, the same way that this does, but it shows you the search trends since 2004 for a specific keyword. So for example, I've been a professional organizer for eight years, and uh, I looked for organizing at, in Google Trends, pointing to it, I haven't written it down yet, but it's on there in my mind. Um, 
So I looked at organizing as a keyword uh, trend, and I saw something very depressing, which was that the trend for the search of the word organizing has gone dra down dramatically since 2004, and I thought, oh my god, I'm in the wrong industry. Oh, what do I do now? So just for curiosity's sake, just like you guys have been talking about, look for different words. So I put in declutter. Guess what I found? Straight up. So guess what keyword I start using in all of my blogging? I'm not using organizing as much anymore. I'm using declutter because that's what people are searching for. So yeah. I bet you the word simplify is a big one. Simplify is a big one, especially because of Marie Kondo's book. You know, it's like there's lots of trends out there. So it's fun to see where the trends are. And Paul's business, for example, we were looking for, we looked in Google Trends for um, boat anchors. And you can see, like, there's a spike every April. You know, it was way down in November, December. <laughs> well, guess when he's going to start doing specific things around that keyword? April, because that's when his people are starting to look for that stuff. So, got another question? Yeah. You've made it very clear to us that if, if you develop your strategy correctly and you have some patience, uh, that your, uh, your visibility is going to improve. Okay. My question is, can the opposite also happen? If you go in and to your website and you're refreshing, you're putting in new ideas, maybe some new phrases, and it, you're, we're waiting for a couple of months or maybe longer to see improvement, but can you, uh, can you stub your toe quickly by putting in wrong content or doing something to your site that just takes you totally out of a ranking? Well, I could say that if you actually neglect to get the technical part of your site intact. Um, site maps, robots files, several linking things in between your pages. There's, there's, a, and your, your, uh, your description, your meta description, your meta tags, all these like little technical things on your site. If you neglect that piece, it's possible that what you do won't have any impact at all on the search rankings if you don't get several technical things in line first. So to take care of the on-site, it's called on-site SEO, um, that's an important step to lay your foundation before you start building. Hey, you, know, you had a question earlier and I skipped out. It wouldn't hurt this. It just wouldn't help. It wouldn't hurt your site. Oh. Like putting up that extra content, it's not going to hurt your site, it's just not going to help if you don't have that foundation. I'll give one example there. There's something called a robots file. It says, don't search my site, Google. And if your robots file says that, you can do everything you want on your site, and your site will not show up at all. So that, those are the type of things. Are, is your site, yeah. Those yeah everybody's are the like, oh things. my god, do I have that? <laughs> don't. Okay, okay, so Tina, you got a question. Go ahead. Yeah. So it's what awesome. would you guys do for yeah. products? Specifically what? Well, they're, they all say that they're doing services, yes. not products. SEO for products. Yeah. I would follow Paul's lead. <laughs> okay. Blogs. Blog. Videos. Blog. Video. Or, or pick one. Get on you video. Know, I mean, I just decided <laughs> to jump in and do blogs and videos you know, with everything right. else. I mean, yeah. but doing something is better than doing nothing. Great. I mean, more comfortable doing blogs. Are you doing e-commerce? Because that can get tricky. No. Okay. Okay, then yes, follow then Paul's lead. I can't even do Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> follow Paul's lead. Okay, you had a question too, sorry. Sure, I had a couple. Um, Go for one, because we've got two minutes left. I know, I know. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. So when we talk about SEO and using sort of the language that people would use, like uh, how do I get ants out of my kitchen? You know, do you keep saying on your homepage, how do I get ants out of my kitchen? And then you look to this, I mean, you repeat the same phrase over and over and over again? Or, I mean, and how deep down does Google look? You know, is it three clicks away from the home page? You know what I mean? I'm just trying to figure out, like, how to get this language in there and not make it not sound still, you know, because usually it's like. I'll, I'll tell you what I do, and I'm not an SEO expert, okay? Uh, the anchor bracket. Um, so, how to, how to anchor using an anchor bracket as a title, mm -hmm. or how to successfully anchor using an anchor bracket, okay? Then my first line would say, if, if you want to learn how to successfully anchor using your anchor bracket, follow these steps, yada, yada, yada. And by now, you should be able to successfully anchor using an anchor bracket. Okay. So I just kind of fit those in. And I'll, I'll use those phrases out of 300, 300 to 400 words. I'll use those phrases three to five times. And I try and you know, keep those phrases almost exact. 
or when they search for that, it shows up four or five times. Okay. Okay, so I can't believe we've reached the end, but if you have a question, and our panelists are willing to hang out for five minutes, I'll, I'll hang out for five minutes. <laughs> like, no, I'm out here. <laughs> one and a half hour, whatever, whatever anybody. I'm really want. grateful to you guys. Thank you so much for being here. This is tremendous information. Um, and thank you also to Steve for videotaping. Thanks to Shemekina for coming here and doing the video. And um, the video will be available online, so if you miss something, um, once it gets produced, we'll uh, be actually be sending out um, a, an email to everybody that was participating in this class. I do have a question for the panel. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I like that he sets up. All right, go for it. All right. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I mean, hey, this, this, this is great. Okay, all right. So I'm doing blogs every week. I'm doing YouTube videos every two weeks. I'm saying this is a result of that. I, I have no proof. So I have Google Analytics. I'm trying to figure out how, how do I set up in Google Analytics that people, now I know people are getting to my website via my blogs because you know my dashboard shows me every day, so, all right, you know, I had these many people come from the blogs. But is there some way to set it up in Google Analytics to where anytime somebody goes to my uh, anchor caddy slash news page that I can set up an analytic for that or a campaign or something like that. Same thing with YouTube. Yeah. I, I, I've looked, I, I can't figure it out. Is there it's a way to do behavior that? behavior flow. Yeah, you, you know, seen that? I, yeah, but you know, maybe I need to hire one of you guys to, <laughs> to, to make me a campaign. Uh, but I would like to have that, that data, you know, yeah. I mean, this, this, are, this many people are coming from my blogs, this many people are coming from my YouTube channel. Yep. So do you guys mind if I let you answer this after? Because I want to do sure. a quick wrap-up. Yeah, Sorry, fine. we could do this Sorry for hours, that. but I thought if we had a three-hour SEO class, no one would come. <laughs> so we try to condense it all into an hour. Um, I just passed out a, uh, an evaluation. We really rely on this. We've never done a panel like this before, and we really would like your honest mm -hmm. feedback. The other thing, before you go and bury your nose in that, um, I want to just let you know that next month, on the second Thursday, just like this month, we're going to be doing another class called Facebook and YouTube and Yelp. Oh, my. <laughs> Making social media work for your business and not the other way around. That's going to be next month. If there's no cost, please come. Um, if you're not registered yet, please do. You can check in in the main office. Um, and if you want to meet with me as an advisor, by, by all means, check in in the office. It's just around the corner. We all have our business cards right next to the coffee maker, so please grab one if there's anybody that you felt connected with and you want to follow up with them. And my business card is there as well. So thank you guys so much for being here. Get out there and start writing. Okay. Anybody who grabs my card, you guys can call me anytime. You know, I'm, I'm not the expert, but I've been using this stuff, so I'll, I'll give me a call. It really depends on what kind of